I don't know if Hope's got... Hope's draft right now is like... The Druid naturally goes... Like, most Druids now are going for the range bear. And they'll go for like Desos, uh, like Mjolnir's, stuff like... Just random stuff like that, just to be a nuisance. And then they just send the bear in and they do insane Ten damage. And it's like, there's that front, but... They were going to push with three heroes and Antimage is going to be farming. Remaining. So... The way that they want to play is going to be kind of disjointed where Antimage wants to farm in the safe part of the map. The rest of their heroes want to push, whilst Radiant have this really cohesive draft where they want to play together. And yes, they might get a pick off where it's like Sada, Blink and Juggle, but they naturally, with their win condition, want to be as a unit, right? So... Yeah. It's uh, two different playstyles kind of coming from this side, and it's whether Empire Hope can draft, or obviously Dire Side, can draft enough I guess save and sustain to be able to fight as four into that of uh, the radiant side, which Absolutely. again is faith. Faith. No <laughs> Empire of faith on the left. Empire. Empire. Hope on the right. It's all very confusing, but we'll, we'll be there to hold your hand and guide you through the minefield of this game and also the minefield of life in general, because uh, that's just kind of you know what, what we're here for is we have coming into these final picks to spend banned out by uh, team empire faith and team empire hope we'll it's a really good ban and yeah really we answered quite a lot of the questions that hope were probably looking for some kind of frontline a cohesive hero that can also again if you had a spend with an ads your buildings are gone you've got lone dread out of your buildings yeah yeah it just absolutely destroys them it was quite impressive last time and being of the same organization you always got to have that question mark about how much they're going to know about each other the answer is probably yeah. a lot the answer may surprise you for sure they should probably i don't know what's their coach dynamic actually do they have um is it like one coach shared between the team? Like I highly doubt you'd, that. You'd assume, you'd assume they wouldn't, right? But I just yeah. don't know if they have a coach at all. So I don't know, but especially considering these these two teams have swapped players recently as well. So yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of uh, inside knowledge and some maybe bands which might seem a little bit weird to us, although so far that hasn't been the case. But yeah, they might know some. Yeah, they currently don't have a coach at all, I believe. Okay. So. If they have any inbuilt an analytics or anything like that, they'll just most likely be shared between the two teams. But again, it's probably not a thing. Um, the ban from again, they need a mid laner for Faith, Radiant, and I think like DK banned. I think DK is going to be a really strong hero for for Faith, especially if you get a blink dagger just to get onto the actual low druid and get past the bear because the bear naturally won't have like radiance or any of those items right if he goes for that build dire team pick. so i think yeah dk might be a good oh oh there we go it's banned damn son mm -mm 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 -mm. t governor the oracle himself it's true i don't play the hero but caught blimey I think you predicted. I don't. I don't know how many games you predicted, to be honest. But uh, you know, these. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're good. Uh, Radiant. Good I predicted, predictions. Have I been predicted terrible. elements was going to win. I predicted hope was going to win. I think I'm four for four right now. I'm not just saying that, but I think I am. Okay. Okay. No. 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 I'm three for four. I believe I said Empire would win against Element. So yeah, I'm three for four, which is respectable. And Wyvern, really good hero. It's basically like the actual support version of what is Fen. It, oh. Seconds, I think you might have said Team Empire Faith were going to beat Elements Pro Gaming last game. Five seconds remaining. Not sure. Anyway, that yeah, doesn't so I matter. Said, yeah, yeah, I got that one wrong. I oh, got that right, one wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I'm three for four. Same page, same page. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was really excited. All right. Final pick, what's it going to be? I have to say, we've, we've been pretty light on the old uh, magic mids other than Pugna who we've been seeing a fair bit is he going to come back I nope. think Pugna's a good hero here oh Kunka but they're going to pick the Pugna uh Kunka not Kunka yeah Kunka that is indeed G playing on the Kunka right there everybody else all tagged up and ready to go as we have Team Empire Faith versus Team Empire Hope you know what makes it even worse is that there's actually equal players with Team with, with Empire H in their name on both sides but of course Team Empire Faith is playing on the Radiant. Team Empire Hope is playing on the Dire. We're not sitting on this couch. Everything is backwards. The world is fucked. Let's go. Game number five off the day. The final matchup and is going to be the Battle of the Empires to find out which is, once and for all, the strongest empire based on this draft. Who would you say, Senor T? I believe that the Radiant lineup will most likely do better. Which <laughs> okay. is... 
which is faith. Team Empire Faith. Yeah, I've got it written faith. down in front of me. I've got little flashcards to tell me which is which. Right. Work. All right, well, just for excitement's sake, and based on no logic at all, I'm going to put my money onto uh, Team Empire hope now if you do believe you know who's gonna win then of course you can head over to es.bet who are official betting sponsors for this as they have a special insurance policy on for the winter madness games where if you bet you can have your bet insured wow fantastic amazing stuff so uh yeah if you want to check them out the link is in the description below es.bet check it out and get your bets down as we go into the final match of the day and oh we're gonna have a, one of these ES.bet, your betting platform for esports, including only what's important, only your favorite Dota 2 and CSGO, the perfect choice of events, gaming statistics, and live stream matches, the most convenient payment system, and the stylish interface. For those always online, there's a mobile app with full platform functionality. Register right now and get your bonus on your first deposit. ES.bet. Just bet it. Sorry for that brief interruption there, but we are back and uh, back into the games. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they kind of throw adverts at us. We have to act re reactively. Talking of active reactively, that's kind of been uh, what a couple of these teams' is, uh, problems have been in these, in these games. Is we a couple of the teams aren't kind of finding their momentum. They're just letting the other team come to them playing reactively rather than going active and trying to find some action around the map. Um, definitely that was our criticism of uh, Team Empire uh, Faith last game, so we'll see if uh, they struggle from the same thing again. As uh, we're going to attack up Dream. Dream backing up behind the tower. Uh, Empire... This is going to be so, so difficult. <laughs> team Empire oh, Hope. <laughs> Uh, down Take here in the bottom. The left, hope on the right. There's yeah, good. yeah. So, uh, sounds easy, right? Or just say Radiant and Dire. It, it doesn't matter what the team names. No, no, I, I, I gotta, I gotta be proper. Team team. It's gonna be two apiece. Hope getting two, Faith getting two. Oh, and, uh, though I say, yeah, yeah, it will be, it will be. The uh, Wyvern comes in. Chill, baby. That very weird voice line. An excellent one, to say the least. Excellent. So the laning matchup here, you've got the Grimstroke top, that's fine, and the... Oh, let's just go for a Courier Snipe mid. mid. Yeah, he's going to be chased away though by the Anti-Mage, it looks like. I think the Anti-Mage is just changing up lanes. But he's now being pinged out. Meanwhile, Dream trying to switch up as well, so both know this is happening. They all have all the vision in the world they could want. Meanwhile, BZZ uh, on that Slardar chasing away Black Arc's Angel. Now they know... Why are they swapping up these lanes? So they're putting the beast up into the rim, that's fine. I think it's mainly because Dyer's you put the... Has been oh, my post actually got oh. it. Oh, that's, that should not be happening when you already wow. know that she's there. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. So I hope we'll be playing without a courier. And uh, I now I'm posting... I think it's pretty bad for the anti just to be running around like this. See, the thing is, you, as a core, you want to be able to see the lanes early and then rotate. So then you still have your TP advantage for the lane, the optimal lane that you want. And the fact he's just been running around... <laughs> Pretty bad. <laughs> this is pretty awkward, yeah. yeah or, or one and two. I think he took a CS at mid. He's gonna miss uh, three creep waves now. Maybe yeah. two by the time he gets there properly. Two and a half, maybe. I've got to throw up a big question mark on that one. Meanwhile, BZZ with that ice shield coming forwards onto Madden. The stun comes out. Is enough to keep the Venge alive. Doesn't look like it. Spin comes out as well. Madden being chugged down. Kuman has arrived, but it's too little, too late. Madden goes down, and that's your first blood. <laughs> Oh, and the uh, roaming anti-mage has currently done literally nothing. Uh, watch out. He's got blink level one. <laughs> he blinked into that fight and, yeah, did, did nothing. But he blinked. And that's the important thing. Oh, promo code 882K8. Sorry. I now, if you're wondering what that promo code anything. is, then head over to the WePlay website where you can enter it with your chance to win an Arcana. And uh, yeah, just, just enter the numbers. 882K8. It's not K9. K9 always makes me giggle. Sounds like a dog. So childish. Anyway, back to the dirt. The more important thing. Porsche's already level two. I feel like Wyvern, is, in uh... terms of laning, it's so sad when you um when you're level one and all you have is Arctic Burn. It's like you use that and then you're pretty much nothing for like an extra 35 seconds or 40 seconds. You are nothing. The Poshka still chasing away onto uh, Black Arc's Angel here. Uh, <laughs> Splinter Blast, well off the mark. Me, one of the top lane side is going to go down to Madden. They will find the kill onto this Wyvern eventually as they rotate in BZZ to finish this one up. Long way to see you die. But uh, Anti-Mage has now settled down in this bottom lane and is starting to uh, get some last hits. But yeah, big difference in the uh, in the CS charts right now. It's currently 6-1. and one. 
And uh, Juggernaut currently 10 and 0, but Kuma gonna do his best to get back on the board. I'm wondering yeah. if this is the switch up they wanted. You need to also note that the Slard was meant to be in the offlane. He spent his time bottom in the gank, and he just walked his entire way to top lane. And got a kill from him, so... Uh... Finn is out. He's, he's Very like short blink away from Kuman, but they don't chase. Meanwhile, Sayu, he's being chased. The double boars come out, but BZZ comes in with a stun onto Bella, and that's going to find them the kill onto the Beastmaster. Yes, yeah, sorry, I might have spoiled that. Cause I oh, saw wow. What a, what a voice emote. <laughs> One of the uh, Frost Haven ones. Yeah, a little, uh, little champagne pop. But uh, if Liquid or anything to go by, then do not really know what champagne is. <laughs> Oh, so it's good to see now. Actually, just sitting down and getting some farm. Like, other than the early bit, like him against a juggernaut, like he can't be killed bot lane, right? Like, there's not enough. A hard, there's not a hard stun for him to get punished by. Yeah, it's it's it's. Re I mean, I don't know. I can can never call it a free game. There is a lot to catch. I mean, wait, who who has who doesn't have lockdown? What are you saying? I think both teams have lockdown. So anti no, in, in, just in laning phase, the anti oh, right. is playing into a juggernaut lane, ah, and he has the lich. The lich now. naturally will probably go like a one 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 build or like one two one. So you have the sinister gaze, but that's still not long enough to kill the anti mage with the juggernaut. So and just blinking on the lich. The most annoying anti mages are those that don't care about their initial CS and just fully zone heroes out of the lane. They're the this... most like what he's doing right now. So obnoxious, and he's probably going to kill him, right? <laughs> he is yeah. indeed. He oh, is indeed. Just uh, using that mana break and uh, getting to work. Human finds the kill. Yeah, there's zoning, and then there's that. Meanwhile, Kodos in a bit of trouble in the mid lane, but he's going to be all right. Um, G will just pick up these uh, this extra CS. Doing pretty well to start things off in this lane, but actually, I say that he might be heading last hits, but he is far behind on deniers. It's, uh, the lone well, druid. Lone druid is a lane winner. Yeah. I'm going to put some simple math on that. Two is bigger and better than one, so... I'm smart, I promise. All right. What do you believe Thanks. <laughs> I know you said nobody. <laughs> Hangs out in the bottom lane. Only has himself wards and an iron branch to his name. Very sad. Kimmin just getting zoned out by this juggernaut, constantly harassing him up. Meanwhile, here at top... Madden and Velo farm themselves up. This is Avenge in the position one, by the way. Anti-Mage in the position three. Not really, but kind of. I don't really know what they're doing. Technically, he's in the same lane, but no, not at all. He is a... Oh, here we go again. Another promo, promo code. One, two. I think that's an I. Go, go, go. We I. play website. Meanwhile, stun comes down onto BZZ, but Velo does get silenced up. They'll take care of that. Phantoms embrace pretty quickly. And life goes back to normal. Meanwhile... It's a very pa this type of draft is going to be very passive. You're going to be naturally farming, and then when the uh, Lone Druid oh, has Oh, like BZZ getting jumped upon here, trying to get away, but the Ink Swell does not come off. Yeah, and that is going to be a dead us. fish in the top lane. Velor takes the kill with his axes, and we'll get back to farming up. It's a very greedy draft from Team Empire Hope, but so far it hasn't really been punished in any way. Well, it's hard to be pun it's hard to punish a lone druid, and then when you lane Lich Juggernaut against the anti mage, you just can't kill him, right? So Hope has the safer lanes where you're just gonna be able to farm, and it's what happens when the lone druid has his wraith bands and let's say his first key item, be it Deso the hurricane fight or something whoever the lone druid wants to go right it's what they do with that is how we'll decide like kind of the uh mid game top lane madden could be in trouble they try to fight up so he's actually the one who's going to go down first now man stunned up can they chase him down stun is up from him actually but in comes g does he have the damage to bring him down he's taking his time but with that haste rune there's really nothing madden can do x mark so he'll turn it off the mark but it doesn't matter gets the kill all the same and now they're going to throw a boat on top of velo as well and Vela taking damage he's going to go down that's a double kill for g up in the top lane fantastic rotation from that kunker Meanwhile, Kuman will be healed up down here. Uh, Dream actually coming in. The guy's not scared. The crit comes through. Kuman trying to fight it up, but realizing that maybe this isn't his fight and has to back himself away. Dream does have level 6, but absolutely no mana to get that off. Although he does have the stick, so maybe he might be tempted. But uh, could just find yeah, himself getting on the slash. Kuman dies from an on slash here. Yeah. Oh, he's got blink as well, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's blinking no, too well. If you blink into... Um, and yeah. you're still in sight, it still doesn't follow you, does it? Because the blink is, is far enough away. It's only four stuff yeah, where you exactly. need to do it into uh, Fog of War. 
Yes. You need to blink will just be fine. Oh, Kodos getting sniped by a cheeky stroke of fate. Not sure if BZZ was going to get in quick enough to find that kill, but the stroke of fate will do the work. That was really good, actually. Lone Druid is one of those heroes where you need to properly commit to him earlier on to shut him down. If you if you let him get his early kind of stat items and he can just farm and annoy you, that's when it kind of gets difficult. But if you shunt him and stop him and maybe take a tower early, that's when Lone Druids kind of feel lost in the game because they want to farm. And this yeah. especially is useful when you have an anti as well. Because you have two cores wanting to just sit back and farm and not really assert the dominance that like an early game hero would do. Potentially a Jug, a Kunker, a Slard or whatever. Rocks being used to cold embrace, gonna save him for the right click damage from Frontman. The huge amount of magic damage was coming out. G finds another one with that double damage rune. They get themselves a Wyvern in the bottom lane and actually might be looking to stick for the tower as well. G has not left this lane. Kodos farming up. I mean, he did die a little bit earlier, but still doing very well for himself in terms of CS. As is a juggernaut. I mean, everybody's having a pretty good game when it comes to CS, to be honest. Yeah, it's what they, um, it's how they move with it though. The Kunku is really being active. And even though like his CS is equal to the Lone Druid, give or take five, six, it's what he's done on the map. If you look at the Kunker, he's gone top, he's gone bot, he's done stuff, right? The Lone Druid, he's just sat mid, he's just stopped the creeps hitting the tower, and now he's moving top, but he's not going to be able to do anything up there. Ooh, quick little pause out from the Lone Druid. I'm sure it won't be long, but Beastmaster has this uh, medallion actually queued up for himself. I like what Team Empire Hope are doing in terms of the Venge. What they're trying to do is get her farmed rather than the Anti-Mage because they know that it doesn't really matter what kind of start the Anti-Mage has. He's still going to get creeps, he's still going to get this Battle Fury, and he's still going to be able to farm this game. So they just put him in the harder lane, give the Venge the easiest start, and then they're just going to kind of run around with their lone Druid and their Venge because they realize yep. that the Druid by himself with an undefined Vengeful Spirit is nowhere near enough to accept the pressure that they need to buy their Anti-Mage space. Wise. Yeah, in an ideal world, by the time the Anti-Mage is nearing Battle Fury, or has Battle Fury, you want to be pushing into his tier 3s, with the Lone Druid having to either farm the other lane that you're not in, or moving into the Anti-Mage's uh, like position. And at that point, you're then not going to have a hard, like a really tested lane. Like a uh, push, sorry. Oh, we're about to get pulled yeah, out beautiful. of the pause of the Yeah, Check I know, right? There we go. Maybe really some David Attenborough, but I'll have to wait. Maybe next time, maybe next time. A crime to uh, try and impersonate Dave Dattenberg. <laughs> Grimstroke already has his tranquils as well, which is pretty nice. I know he's three position, but still, um, sometimes we see his Grimstrokes really the, suffer. Uh, the four position, by the way. He's only in the lane yeah. because of the slot of the bottom. Did so, I say four? Uh, I meant four. You said three. Oh, dirty Grim is four, slot is three. Maposhka died. That's the thing. wonder if we'll get a replay of that. Who knows? I don't know. It's only a pot five, mate. I don't think they care about replays of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It feels very bad, man. Well, Stun comes out, but it's a little bit too late from BZZ, and Vela actually gets in front of the Slada. He's got this board to slow him down as well, but x -Marks comes out. G comes in. They're not interested in that rune anymore. And actually, the x marks is timed perfectly. It doesn't matter that the Roar comes out. Vela still trying to go for it, but BZZ, he's in the river. He's in his element. He's swimming like a fish. And Vela will go down, and the rune goes to uh, Team Empire Faith as well. Nice Meanwhile. touches of well. cleaving of walls for the extra damage from Quillet Blade. Excellent work, Mr. Kunker player. Okay. Uh, comes Look, in. it's the Radiance catapult pushing with Lone Druid in one lane. You've got the Anti Mage in the other lane, really pressuring with the catapults. It's really pretty smart when the uh, machines do this. Uh, X marks? Doesn't work. There we go. Cool. The ball. Oh. Not quite Pay sure. What happened, up, down. No idea. Radiance structures are fortified. I don't know. That was weird. It's Radiant just because he used the uh, callback on Lone Druid, it removed the animation of the X, but the X was still there. Oh, okay. Right. So it, 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 nothing different Dyer's happened, it just, you just couldn't see the X. Attack. Weird bug, I guess. Apparently so. Oh, the jumping forwards on to Sayo here. They're going for the Grim Stroke. He does not have enough health to survive this. Immediately blown up by Kuman and Co. And, uh, well, Tower's already dead, so there's no reward to be gained. But I'm sure they'll be happy to push away down the lane and take those creeps and get some footing in the enemy jungle. Always important. Very aggressive plays from Kuman on this anti mage, but he's doing so well. He's actually above the juggernaut in CS despite being so active around the map. This is impressive stuff from him. Dyer's middle tower has been denied. Yeah, for sure. I think Kunkun's one of those heroes, though, that if you keep getting those good rotations, 
you naturally will farm as you're doing the rotation, so it's good. Yeah, and also the Lone Druid dying a couple of times has stunted his farm, so. May. And also, a quick reminder, Faith is Radiant, Hope is Dire. Yep. Why'd you not slap two little texts below? Or is that not in your production cost? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Dyer's Talk for a minute. Alright, I got this. Anti-Mage going for the Battle for Aether, obviously. He's only the Demon Edge away, it's pretty cool. And look, the Lone just pushing again. Insane. I just can't actually stop this. The heroes aren't really good at preventing this push. You need the Lich there with the armor to re try and push this back. Oh, X marks. Boat used as well. He's gonna try and use that cold embrace to keep himself alive a little bit longer. But the magic damage still going through another jump on top of him and bring him down. Found the embrace helping out with that one as well. I mean, look at this. I'm doing. I'm doing production. I'm doing camera work. I'm doing casting. You're doing great, mate. I'm just sitting here, just enjoying my drink, watching the game. No, I was gonna say. I feel like you're lying there, but I didn't want to tell anyone. <laughs> and look, the entire time. You're too. You're too faithful. <laughs> Got you. The animator is just farming away. Like he just doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, he's active in the early game, now getting his farm on a little bit. The raw comes out of this juggernaut. The enemy core is gonna go down. Juggernaut takes a fall and Faith lose their position one carry. He needs to get out of there much sooner than that. The tier one is now down, so that's going to be interesting. I say now down, they're about to push it and take it now, but yeah. You know. <laughs> top Not a life for much longer. Man, uh, God, wonderful stuff. Fallen. Yep, I'm going to continue pushing away, getting forwards, getting their footing here. So, as we uh, like, come up to the seems to be level 6. He's quite under leveled right now. Yeah. He's still not level 6, 14 minutes in. It's a really big issue against this draft. I mean, yeah, I mean, look at this. It's just the Venge, the Beastmaster with the Medallion, and the Lone Druid. And they have more than enough damage to rip through this tower. I mean, the, the Frost Shield's going to help out a bit. Stun comes out onto the uh, the Juggernaut, but he's got that Inkswell on him, which doesn't make him an attractive target to go for. Meanwhile, G comes in. Oh, and beautiful curse comes out. Sayu, uh, absolutely destroyed. Nice positioning there from Black Arc's Angel to get that one off. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm a bit worried for Faith right now. The uh, Radiant of this. <laughs> He's just spamming out voice lines while he dies. Yeah, yeah, they are killing the Wyvern a lot. Um, they're, not, they're not making these forward plays. The issue that I see them having is if the Anti Mage, which is completely uncontested right now, you, the only way you kill him later in the game is like Slardos, Stun, X combos, Juggernaut hitting him. And if you're focusing that hard on one hero, you've still got the swap to think about. You've still got the curse to be scared of. The, the, the hill, the lone druid naturally just split pushing. Like, they really have a lot of factors they need to consider. And they need to win the game early before the dire side just take it away. Don't give any to hoops about Radiant. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Poshkom, this Lich. He's, uh, he hasn't. It's, it's weird that the five position is been surviving much more than the four position on the side of Team Empire Faith, but you know, it's, uh, that's rough. And to mention, he's now got his Battle of Fury 15 minutes, which is actually pretty decent time, especially. Um, actually, I'll say that his lane was actually really good. It was just how he got to lane took a bit of a <laughs> time just because he started top walk mid killed a lich awkwardly ran back around the jump came back bottom yeah i mean but that's the thing he was getting stuff Radiant's done uh, i mean kuman can't really fault his anti-mage play it was pretty damn good it's just um it's a bit worrying radiant's draft is this draft that meant to be in your face and right now they're just Sitting in the base, Dire Vision is really aggressive top side. But Go jumping onto the PCZ, taken out instantly. Maposhka goes down as well. The auras are too strong from Team Empire Hopes. They're barreling down this top lane. And, uh, I don't see the how they can defend this easily with the fact that Lich is down. One for the armor and two is just not that small. They shouldn't be scared at all, actually. Yeah, they, they destroy it. And uh, looking at Rax as well. And this bear doing a ton of work. G comes in with the boat, with the torrent, and only landing onto the bear, though. I mean, they will force it back, but goodness gracious. Team Empire yeah. Hope. I mean, now opened up. Yeah, this is really scary. And the, the, the 
Juggernaut's also going for Battle Fury, so he understands that they're really behind right now and he needs to match the farm. But he has to get to the Battle Fury first to then unlock his next item, right? Or farm up, sorry. And it's like, it's just staggering himself. I would have liked to see the Juggernaut maybe go for earlier game items to try and assert the pressure of their draft. What did he go for? He's going for Battle Fury right now. He still hasn't completed it. Maybe it's completed on the Kuro now. We'll find out in a second what the Kuro means. And... Uh, no, it wasn't. Let me have a look. I'm jumping the game. No, he's a long way away from it. Yeah, he's about 1,200 gold away from the Battle Fury. Which really it's not a good sign for Faith. So, well, I mean, this Kunker, he's still probably the strongest hero individually on the map, but when you add the auras onto this, it just doesn't feel that way. Kuman actually blinks himself away from danger there. That is incredibly lucky. He could have died there. For sure. That pickoff could have helped them. They might have been able to take a tier one after it. But again, Dyer are playing as a, a strong four and then anti-mage on the side. So right now, Dyer, if you look at them, they're, they're only four heroes, yeah? You completely ignore the anti-mage and Radiant are losing to four. Yeah. So it's, gonna, it's a really scary factor when then you include, hi, there's a 10k net worth anti-mage freely farming the entire map. <laughs> Look at this Roshan. I mean, yeah. these aren't, with the auras stacked up, they can just annihilate Roshan and even double damage run coming in as well. I mean, Desolator, DD, auras, everything is just lining up here. And they're even going to throw down, oh, BZZ comes in. How low is Roshan though? He just flounders a little bit inside the pit, doesn't play it well and does give away the Aegis. And now with the boat coming in with the double, on, well, no, singular on me slash. That doesn't double up. My bad. But Mpushka's going to go down all the same. Dream trying to chase on the wipe. Won't be successful. Nice stun coming out there. Black Arc Angel will take a fall, but Dream is dead. And down goes Sayu as well. Kuman joins the fight. Meanwhile, he's trying to chase BZZ. He does get the stun off, but I think he might be dying all the same. It's a triple kill for Kuman. Everybody on the side of Team Empire Faith is dead, and Team Empire Hope can just run down the middle lane, and I'm not sure they're going to leave any building standing. Yeah, this, this draft's in, insane, actually. Is... I didn't think it would be this scary. I thought Radiant would be able to take the fights, but the Grim being so underleveled and the early fights that Dyer were taking... They weren't able to punish them only being four together with like the double hit show and that kind of general momentum because the Jug was farming, the Kunker was good, making good rotations, but they just weren't able to win any fights. And when you don't win fights, you lose map, map uh, control. And when you use map control against a, a push strap, which is pretty much what Dyer is minus the anti-mage, you're going to lose some key objectives really early on. That is exactly what we're seeing, and uh, unfortunately, you know, they, they couldn't push in in time because it's still, you know, 90 minutes into the game. The game, the death timers were very, very low on the side of uh, Team Empire Faith, so it, it makes it very hard to get to this high ground in time to push, especially when you kill them around the Roche bit. However, the advantage they've gained is insane, and, and Kuman can just sit here, um, even send out an illusion to take that tower if he wants to, being a little bit cautious. Knows well, that yeah, like... Think about how mu how much time it will take to kill anti-mage, right? So if the Slada blinks onto the anti-mage, after the X, all the other stuff that they use, anti-mage can use a spell shield, and it will just take a long, a large amount of time to kill the anti-mage. Meanwhile, in the other lane, because at no point has Dyer played with the anti-mage, the other team will then be just taking your racks or something. So Kuman should start pushing further in and being a bit more aggressive just to make the space for the other side of the team to do stuff. But you're 16k oh, ahead. Dream taking Play far too much damage here. The spin's not going to save. You're going to have to force out the Omni Slash. Goes to the TP as well. He's going to make it out. Oh my god. Omni Slash that is TP. Play. That was big sick. Oh, Sayu's going to try and come in and try and help out, but ends up dying himself. They do expend the Winter's Curse for it, though. I'm wondering. I will say, though, it was a big play. That means literally nothing because he does no damage with it anyway. So he yeah. gets out with it. And uh, how are they take this fight now? No Omni Slash, no Soul Bind. They got no Licho. It's. Ah, but they do have the Heaven's Halberd. Huzzah! Yeah. No. Oh, it's run out. Uh -oh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, well. It was fun while it lasted. Unfortunately, yeah, the top racks nice. are now gone. I don't really expect Team Empire Hope to be backing out particularly. I mean, it's most on the Kunker. Trying to do something, anything. Meanwhile, Antimage is pushing in this bottom lane at the same time as well as if they needed more things to worry about. Kodos happy here. Now they'll jump forwards on BZZ, get the stun off. Now the boat now comes out as well, but the swap from the low ground from Madden going to keep the, the uh, Lone Druid alive for the time being. 
Meanwhile, Raw comes out onto BZZ. They're not really doing much damage to him. Swap again, and Dream is dead. Madden will take him down, and now the tower in the bottom lane goes down as Kuman is getting his split push on. There might be fights going on. Team Empire Hope are holding on by a skin of their teeth, or are they? As they are getting raxed in the mid lane, in the bottom lane. Kodak's going to work. It's looking very convincing as Team Empire Hope take down mid. Anti-Mage taken down bottom. They jump forward. They get Maposhka. Team Empire this, face. This is painful to watch, Crop. Their base is gone. This is Mega Creep. Take a lot of defense from this. This game is over. And this is going to be Team whoa, Empire. Whoa, whoa. Don't get ahead of yourself. There could be a wild comeback in this could last four hours. I don't mind. I've got nothing to do tonight. <laughs> I've casted a lot of games of Dota. And unfortunately... I take it back. Yeah, it's over. Don't worry. <laughs> there is no way. He even... Oh my god. He even cast a lit jolty on the bear who wasn't soul bound. Just blinking into their base. Just doesn't Amazing, care. Yeah. There comes all. a little heal. The wife gonna tickle away. Nearly kills him. Okay, all right. With the help of the wife, they'll finish him off, but not enough. There's also drawings on the floor. I think that's from the observer. Getting bored. <laughs> I can't tell now. So Faith and Hope, they swap some players around. Who's mm -hmm. the A team? Who's the B team? I understand that this game probably says that Hope's the A team. Yeah, but Faith was oh, supposed to be the A team. Faith. Faith was meant to be the A team first, right? 90% sure Faith was supposed to be the A team, like right now. And uh, yeah. as we watch Sayu just get annihilated. Yeah. Oh. Well, either way, like, in my early prediction, I clearly didn't show enough respect to just the basic aura push strat and... Yeah. And me with my very astute analysis... Ah, um, uh, yes. Promo code 8H729. Ignore that. Back to the game. Slow. Um, <laughs> we play website into that end for chance to win Arcana. They're still fighting up, but... I mean, he just has popped on Kodos, but they're just, they've revealed the Ancient now as well. So he gets uh, roared up, BZ is dead. Nice little uh, torrent there, but it doesn't matter. The base has been destroyed, and when the base Not dies, over. you lose. That's Dota 2, ladies and gents. And that is Team Empire Hope dismantling their sister team, Team Empire Faith. And that is going to be the end of their series. Best of ones. They're brutal. They're quick. Yeah. Push strats. They're, they're, they're effective, apparently, in this patch. Yeah, there's I mean, no time to adapt. But against the team you're playing against. It's just turn up, play the game, hope you did it, had a good draft, don't get a bit cheesed and off you go. Again, the theme in all the teams that won today, all of them had a very strong push mechanism that had low cooldown and or literally no cooldowns because it was an aura. You look at the first game, it was a Pugna. That was the key pushing hero. Second game, that was one. Medusa, next game. Beastmaster Medusa, game after that. Juggernaut Venge, game after that. This game, it's like... All of them are just basic low cooldown push strats, and the other teams all had cooldowns that they had to play into. DK yeah. ult, uh, TB ult, all stuff like that. It's uh, yeah, I think you found the uh, the way to win in the CIS region.